How can I get to heaven? That's the most important question you'll ever have to answer. Not only is it a matter of life and death, but this question has eternal ramifications. And we need to get this one right. So how can I get to heaven? Well, you need to be cleansed from your sins. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God says that everyone has sinned. So we need to realize that sin has separated us from God. Well, what is sin? The Ten Commandments are a really good test to see how we're doing. So let's run through a few of these. Have you ever told a lie, even if it was little? Have you ever had a hateful thought? Well, God considers that murder in the heart. Matthew 5, 21 to 22 says, You have heard it said from those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, You fool, will be liable to hell of fire. Okay, so have you ever had a lustful thought? God considers lust, adultery in the heart. In Matthew 5, 27 to 28, he says, You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with a lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Have you ever used God's name in an unholy way? Used it as profanity? When we use God's name, it is holy and it should mean something. Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? Thieves, still. Have you ever brought dishonor to your parents? Disobeyed them? Okay, this is just a few of the Ten Commandments. How are we doing? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever taken something that wasn't yours? <clears throat> Have you ever had a hateful thought? A lustful thought? Brought God's holy and precious name in vain? 1 Corinthians 6 9 to 10 says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. If you've broken any of the Ten Commandments, you cannot enter heaven in this fallen state. It's like holding on to a 10-link chain dangling over the cliff of the Grand Canyon. And it doesn't matter which one breaks, you're still falling to your death. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin is what caused death. But God has given us his gift, his son. He died in our sins. He took the punishment we deserve, death, and he took them away. So let me go back and reread 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10 in the context of the good news that follows. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. This says that if you sinned, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's bad news. But there's good news in the next verse, verse 11. And such were some of you. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Such were some of you. Isaiah 1.18 says, Come now and let us reason together, said Jehovah. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. So how do we become clean? How do we become white as snow? Romans 10.8-13 says, <clears throat> But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. 
For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For every one who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So God has made salvation very easy. Call on the name of the Lord. Ask him to save you from your sins. He will. And that's a promise from God who cannot sin, who cannot lie. You don't know when you're going to die. You don't know if you'll have a heart attack in the next hour. You don't know if you'll get hit by a drunk driver, or somebody running a red light in a car wreck. We don't know when we're going to die. We don't know when we're going to be called to give an account for what we have done. So do it today. Don't wait. The time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Ask him to save you from your sins. I hope to see you in heaven someday.